Nevertheless, I would say that this is some like high IQ stuff. Uh, th this kind of philosophy, like it's, I just can't imagine your average drop kick on the on the street being able to comprehend any of this. Like, because because I think you know I, I'm fairly fairly well versed. I mean, in, in a very amateurish, you know, pedestrian kind of way. But um, you know, it takes takes a lot of effort to to really start getting your head around this stuff, comprehending what what you've just outlined the the relativistic. Symbological uh, yeah, I, uh, nature of it all. Do Do you think there's a place for laboratory alchemy? Have you Have you Do you know much about that? I mean, I do think there's a place for uh, applied alchemy. Uh, it's mostly, uh, for example, in things such as medicine. Uh, medicine is, in a way, uh, applied alchemy. Uh, so I I do think there is a use for it. Uh, but I, but I also do think that it is secondary. Uh, just as, for example, uh, in astrology, uh, I think the spiritual meaning uh, of the the heavenly bodies is is comes primary, and then secondarily their literal movement through the uh, space. Uh, so I think the same is true for alchemy. I think the spiritual interpretation comes first and the spiritual work comes first and then uh, it can be applied to anything. For example, to medicine. I actually just had an alchemist on the on the show last week who makes some um, spagyric tinctures. I've actually ordered a couple, so I'm gonna, I'll let you know how it goes um, if they if they work well or not. But he was he was a fascinating guy. I can't wait to post that one because he was talking about you know all the all the different yeah, ways that yeah. you can apply these alchemical principles to uh, agriculture and medicine, as you've just said, various things like that. So I'm looking forward to putting that one out. He was an interesting guy, but we also talked about he he was absolutely a hundred percent. Uh, certain that that operations, you know, like I, I mentioned recently, the the homunculus or uh, the philosopher's stone, you know, things that that apparently, according to him and other literature I've read, are, are very real things. Uh, yeah, I mean, now it is today. It has a different uh, connotation, but uh, they said, ah, oh, the, these coal burners, they they don't understand alchemy <laughs> because they're you know they're. So, Burning coal, they are making little fire different, yeah. and such and this, <laughs> and they're trying to literally uh, do all these things, and they don't understand that it is primarily a spiritual work. Uh, but but I do think there is also a place for uh, for corporeal uh, alchemy. For sure. Do you ever do you know how they they're meant to make the homunculus? They get rainwater, they zap it on a certain day with you know when there's a thunderstorm or something, then they get the water. And, and throw some fresh cow manure in or something like that and then effectively just whack off into it. And when, when you hear stories like that, you're like, this, this has got to be comedy on some level. Like it's, uh, someone's written this, so they're whacking off into, a, into cow shit. I mean, think about that for a second. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the seeds, the rational seeds in the sphere of the moon, uh, the spirit fermenting the waters. And these waters, you can say they are fermented. Uh, it is cow shit. It is it is fermented earth. Uh, and then the combination of these two, that is the creation, and and it, that is the cosmological process. Uh, but but then it must be reminded that yeah. the initiation is 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 also always uh, a, a a reproduction of this cosmo cosmogonic cosmogonic process. So. Uh, whether it's meant literally or not, uh, there is a, a profound symbolic meaning to these things. I just can't get the image out of my head of, uh, you know, a coal burner whacking off into cow turd. It just, um, I don't know. Yeah, must, must be some funny stuff going on um, for sure. But yeah, that's, that's interesting. I mean, have you, being in Europe, you must have seen a lot of these Gothic churches and a lot of, a lot of these... Um, I always kept visiting them and... Uh, I mean, now, of course, now I can see better and I can see more things than when I was 10 years old. Uh, so now it is even more fruitful. But 
yeah, I, I do really enjoy uh, being in, in such places and uh, and praying there and, and looking at all the uh, the symbols and uh, just a general ambience. I, I always feel uh, very peaceful when I am in uh, such a building. This is very nice. Yeah, it's one of the most powerful experiences I've ever had was, was in a cathedral. I Particularly being from Australia, we literally have nothing old here. Everything is new. Um, so yeah, for, for, for someone like me, it's, you know, something different for sure. Um, it, 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 it's kind of, um, I always explain to people that if you need any evidence that the world is in some sort of state of um, condensation or decline or whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah. If you go yeah. into one of those cathedrals, it becomes totally immediately agree. clear that, uh, that, that we're not going <laughs> upwards. We're very much going downwards. Medieval cathedrals it's, were also built, uh, built according to uh, like sacred principles to like uh, whatever sacred geometry or whatever, like in the right directions, uh, taking into account uh, like sacred places, like like certain places are also like have a, have a uh, certain spiritual presence or spiritual sensitivity. Uh, and I think in the, in the Middle Ages, uh, cathedrals were built according to uh, like they had knowledge of these things and and they built them according to these things. And this is also where uh, Freemasonry uh, uh, comes from. Uh, you know, these medieval masons, and of course, uh, yeah. they declined uh, at a certain point. They uh, stopped building cathedrals and uh, became uh, speculative masons. But uh, they used to be uh, like cathedral builders. So today, it may be a malicious force, but mostly it is uh, it is just an empty uh, husk of what it used to be. Mostly this. Uh, uh, bourgeois, uh, old white people, uh, old white men uh, sitting around. For the higher levels, maybe there are really uh, aliens and uh, satanics and uh, whatever, but uh, uh, it's mostly just a, a degenerated yep. tradition like any other. What, what's your opinion on, um, you know, the next hundred years? Just to, just to finish off, what does is, what is Jan predict? I think uh, before that, what I think will happen at least in the coming hundred years is uh, virtualization. Yeah. I think that will happen. Virtualization, yeah, that's what I think will happen. Everything will become virtual. Uh, it may be that there is uh, a reaction against it, that it will be, uh, that we'll have maybe in the next hundred years, maybe we'll have a golden age, maybe we'll like a relative golden age, maybe we'll we'll see a, a further, a more again an, an appreciation of the body uh, be reignited. Uh, that's possible, but I expect further uh, uh, descent into the virtual. That's what I expect. People seem to be running head first towards it. Uh, I don't think there's many skeptical people at all. I mean, I don't know if you saw Elon Musk with his Neuralink thing that he was talking about. Where you, you um, they, they're just starting to get to this point where they're yeah. going to be able to yeah. um, manipulate consciousness or upload consciousness into. I, mean, I, I think already you know, the people like carry the their word, smartphones chips and things like everywhere. They are already. Luckily, in my fraternity, uh, yeah. we have a, a ban on uh, smartphones, so you can't. Uh, you can take them with you if you go there. Um, I think uh, I think uh, that should be enforced. If you if you if you're going to have uh, a community, I think you should uh, okay. you should ban smartphones and uh, and and internet and such. Right. So so for some of the people that aren't on Twitter, do you just quickly want to talk about psychic Platonism? Compared to this, a so what is it exactly that he this said? Describes? Well, look at all these uh, left wing. Uh, Ideologists, uh, they are such Platonists because they believe in uh, magical forms that exist apart from uh, corporeal things uh, and they can manifest in everybody. So uh, uh, a female form or a female soul 
uh, or female qualities can uh, manifest as easily in a male body as in a female body. And then if that happens, then the body must be changed to uh, resemble uh, the form. Or look at, uh, they say, oh, these immigrants, when they get, uh, uh, when an African comes to, uh, comes to our country, then they magically uh, take on the, the form or the soul of, of, a, of a Dutchman, and then uh, they will change according to it. Um, so I, and I said, well, I mean, that's not real Platonism, because real Platonism uh, is, is uh, a spiritual Platonism. Uh, it doesn't right. teach that these forms can uh, manifest into any, any substance at all. And that's where the medieval doctrine of uh, substantial form uh, comes from. It says basically that uh, certain substances are receptive to certain forms uh, and that uh, substance and a form uh, correspond to each other. So that you can't just arbitrarily uh, manifest any form into any substance. Uh, so basically for the, the psychic Platonist believes in these psychic forms which are not the spiritual forms of Plato but rather um, these elements uh, or subcorporeal forms, really, uh, which uh, the, the forms which uh, subsist in that realm, um, and these are really accidental forms. So basically, the psychic platonist believes that there are only accidental forms. This basically everything is an accident. Uh, you will also hear this often. Ah, uh, why uh, should you have more rights just because you were? born in this country or whatever, because they think it is an accident. They think it happens accidentally. It is not, uh, it doesn't belong to you. Uh, so yeah, I, I, that basically a psychic platonist is someone who believes in this, these, these psychic forms, which are always accidental. And uh, it expresses itself in, in certain ways. For example, uh, uh, one of the most prominent uh, examples of this, expressions of this is uh, uh, transsexualism. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the uh, traditional uh, believer in uh, substantial form would say, ah, a male form uh, manifests yeah. in a, a male body or in a male substance, and a female form in a female substance. Uh, but the psychic Latinist, uh, he will say, no, a female form uh, can manifest in every, in, in, in any substance. Uh, and, and the same for the male form. Uh, so uh, that's the difference. And that's, that's where transsexualism originates. Uh, but it's also very closely connected to the virtual. Uh, for example, uh, uh, anime girls, uh, maybe to make it... Uh, <laughs> applicable to the to the listener more to the average listener and then we go I think there's like this uh, image aboard uh, 4chan post that says they're like uh, the platonic form of women yeah. or whatever <laughs> but but yeah it, it's basically yes it's 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 the the the, the psychic form of a woman uh, but it's in it's in the substance of the virtual uh, there's no corporeal uh, substance, so that it, it's completely uh, divorced from from the yeah. bodily. I think in my blog post I also say it's it's actually worse than transsexualism because transsexualism is still attached to the body, but uh, these these weebs they are completely divorced from from the corporeal. They are even further away. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it must be happening quickly because. Like I'm, I'm a little bit older, probably than most people, um, in these circles, maybe by a bit. Um, I don't get the anime thing. I can't understand it. I'm like, what, what the fuck are these kids on about? <laughs> like, I got no idea what any of this is. It's. I mean, the, the entire so, uh, ideology really crazy. of of these these traditional Catholics is also an example of uh, psychic Platonism. They are often they are not they often are not even baptized. And they will uh, post anime images and say anime is Catholic or whatever. And uh, I mean, and also basically any online ideology. It's not only, of course, traditional Catholics. People call themselves uh, traditional Catholics, but also online 
uh, virtual uh, communist or whatever. It's it's uh, it's really it's really also a good example of uh, psychic resonance. It's interesting. This kind of what I like about it is it ties into a lot of stuff that I I try to promote as well, which is is the body effectively a, like a radical uh, course of getting in touch with the body. Of course, that that's not the only thing, but but also this kind of skepticism of ideologies. Like people are super super ideological, but it's it's about these you know, psychic ideas. It's more about thoughts. Yeah. Uh, thought systems of of thinking uh, or even feeling. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, these these ideologies uh, really sure. have nothing to do with uh, the logos or uh, the ideas in the spiritual sense, but uh, purely in the psychic sense of the word. So uh, it's, it's it's connected surely. Yeah, one of the biggest takeaways I got from Zazen in particular in just that simple exercise of just watching myself was that like I'm fucking out of control like I got <laughs> just everything is compulsive like most of the stuff I'm not really consciously making up on my own on my own merit so to speak there's a lot of compulsion there's a lot of influence from the external environment um stuff I read online you know whatever it is um it it seems like as you say most people are not really a hundred percent in control. Of course, sometimes the word spirits is used sure. also for these psychic beings, uh, whatever you call them, uh, demons or demons or uh, jinn or fairies or uh, trolls or whatever. Uh, they can they can be uh, yeah. well, well spiritual beings like angels are always purely good. Um, these psychic beings can be, uh-huh. they can be good, uh, they can be neutral, but they can also be evil. Uh, and I think uh, the influence, uh, the psychic influence that, that the range today is definitely mostly evil. Uh, mostly malevolent uh, psychic beings have influence today because uh, people have locked themselves away from higher influences. Uh, it, it's not, uh, m- it must always remember that it, this people do it to themselves. Uh, they, 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 as it were, put up a shield above them to shield them from ev- any uh, positive psychic influence and open up, as it were, the wall beneath them so that any subcorporeal psychic influences can creep in to the cracks. Uh, but yeah, it is, this, it is always uh, of their own making in this sense that, that it's their, they make themselves receptive to the one and close themselves off from the other. Uh, so in this sense, it, it, it is their own invention, but it's, only, it's mostly about the, uh, what, what you're re- receptive to. And not, uh, and the things themselves are then provided by whatever uh, you receive. From the, we can also say you need source, to become whatever you want to call uh, it. a strict, hardcore yeah. materialist, uh, because if you do that, then uh, there will be no psychic, psychic influences on you. But that is much better than malevolent psychic influences. So if you become a hardcore materialist. Uh, also in your life, uh, for example, you uh, you refrain from using any psychic uh, media and uh, now become a bodybuilder, living, uh, build, grow your own food and uh, have a wife and uh, 10,000 children and whatever. If you focus completely on the biological material world, uh, that will be better than allowing these uh, malevolent psychic influences to work on you, yeah. even if you then do not go further, then maybe, I mean, maybe, uh, maybe then even you will be saved. I'm not sure, but maybe, maybe uh, God will have mercy and say, even though you did not uh, pursue higher things than the than the corporeal, maybe then even because today it is so difficult, you will be saved. But uh, I don't know about that. One of the interesting things you mentioned once on an online exchange with me was uploading consciousness to a chip 
people that elect to do that. I think it was the, the Israeli author that wrote Sapiens. And in his view, he, being the arc materialist that he is, that um, effectively it will be a good thing when humans get to the point where they are able to become emotionless and move beyond the body and be uploaded into some sort of simulation or chip of the self. And he was firmly convinced that that's where humanity is, is going. Um, but it sounds like almost that that is the furthest limit of psychic platonism. And which, which I thought was fascinating. Is, is, I'd never uh, thought about that. Subcorporeal psychic domain. Uh, that is the outer darkness. So, uh, yeah, and, and, and those souls who, uh, who throw themselves into it, uh, they will stay there forever and also for the next cycle. And they will attempt uh, to break. And then when the barrier will be established again, they will uh, be locked away until the time that they... Uh, uh, try to start breaking through again and the two men will allow them to break through again. Uh, but yeah, they will, uh, they will be, uh, these, these malevolent beings. Uh, so anyone who is uploaded or whatever, uh, onto a chip, he will, uh, he will be in the lowest state of existence. It would be, uh, uh, fate, uh, like hell. And it's, it's difficult to convince people that it's not a good thing because I, I have friends that have read it and they're like, oh, that's going to be great. I mean, I probably elect to do it. And I'm, I'm trying to explain to them as best I can why it's, it's probably yeah, not I, a good of option. Of course, that's, that's just uh, how it is today. And there's, uh, there's not much we can do about it except for try to... Uh, try to spread uh, or uh, make people remember what was said uh, before. So as you say, it's, it's not really a reason to be black-pilled. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. easier I, I, I agree. Done. I mean, so, I mean I, sometimes I am uh, black-pilled yeah. and I think, uh, I mean, even talking about it now, my mood is getting worse, which shouldn't be, but of course, which, which I shouldn't allow, but uh, that's the case. But, uh, uh, we should still be, uh, we should be compassionate in a sense of, we should still try to, uh, salvage, uh, what is useful and try to, uh, help those who are still able to be helped. So yeah, we should of course do what we can, but also, uh, be content that it will be very little compared to, uh, earlier ages. Yeah, and clearly the forces at work um, are much, uh, much better funded, equipped, and um, more motivated probably by the looks of things than the many people on the other side. No, I, I mean, I, I, I can see uh, a future in which a uh, sure. uh, yeah. no political trouble. regime will be one yeah. that appreciates uh, the, the corporeal over the subcorporeal at least temporarily. I, I, I can see that happening in, even in the next 10, 20 years. I can see it happening. I, but I don't, I, of course, I don't see mm. uh, uh, a reinstation of the divine monarchy inspired by uh, an, 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 an esoteric Catholicism yeah, and the restoration more, more of the kingdom powerful. of Prester John and uh, and so forth. Of course, I don't see that happening until the end of the world. But uh, I, I can see like a temporary uh, reactionary uh, regime. I can see that happening. We've gone for over two hours, which is the longest one I've done so far. So that's that's awesome. We should do it again sometime, maybe about some other stuff. But um, yeah, I re really appreciate you. Uh, coming on and spending the time to uh, to talk to me about about this stuff which i again don't know much about yeah and uh, thank you for having me on i uh, en i enjoyed speaking the to you the fool is rooted in the dark earth